Hi. Do you get a lot of junk mail? I do. Most of the junk mail I get is unsolicited credit card offers, and up until Occupy Wall Street, I used to just toss these in the bin unopened. But Occupy Wall Street got me thinking. These offers are from the same financial institutions that ruined our economy by speculating on the housing market. This isn't junk mail. This is an opportunity for a dialogue. Why? Well, see, inside every one of these credit card offers is one of these. It's a business reply mail envelope. The bank signed contracts with the post office to get these envelopes, and they only pay postage on the envelopes that get mailed back. Now, the banks are assuming that we'll use these envelopes to send in our credit card applications, but we don't want more credit cards, do we? We certainly don't want them from the big banks that caused the financial crisis. But we can use these envelopes in other ways. We can have a dialogue. So, phase one, this is the easiest. Everyone can do this. Just take the envelope, lick it, seal it, and send it back empty. It's quick, it's easy, it takes you five seconds at the mailbox every day, and it costs the bank about 25 cents. Now I know, that means banks pay less for postage than we do, but please, let, let's have that protest another day. Now phase two, if you're willing to put a little more work into it, would be to send it back full. Just take all the materials that came in the envelope, put them in there, take the envelope itself, put that in there. I mean, after all, the heavier the envelope is, the more it's going to cost them in postage. And then any other junk mail you got that day that you think might be interesting to them. Like, I got this baby products catalog, and I'll put that in there. I mean, bankers have babies, and being immoral doesn't mean you're infertile. The other thing that I do is I send them a note. I printed out a bunch of notes on my printer, and I just clip them out, and I put one in with each envelope. That way, they know that this wasn't just a miscommunication. It actually was communication. This one says, hello, big bank clerk, please join a union. Now, phase three, if you're willing to put a little bit of money into it, and I do mean a little bit, would be a wood shim. This is a wood shim. It's, ex it's exactly what it looks like. It's a piece of wood. You can get a pack of 12 of these at a hardware store for about $1.50. Now, a wood shim, when you put that into the envelope, oh, and Put a message on it, too, so that it's actually communication. This one is hashtag OWS for Occupy Wall Street. Put the shim in the envelope, and suddenly the envelope becomes really heavy, and more importantly, it becomes rigid. Why does that matter? Well, a rigid mail piece costs more in postage to mail. That's why Netflix has to pay more money for their DVD mailers than like you pay to send a postcard. You can go further with this idea. I think the gold standard for postage paid protest would be something like a roofing shingle, because that's really heavy and dense and crumbly. Um, but it's important that this should be about communication. So I think that putting some sort of message, you know, clear, rational, debate, a slogan, something you saw in a good sign, I think that that matters too. Think about the scene in a mailroom at a big bank when they get a few dozen roofing shingles, a few hundred wood shims, and a few thousand empty envelopes. They're probably going to have a meeting about it. And that's the point of this. This isn't really about running up the postage bill in the big banks, although that's a nice side effect. The real effect of this is to force banks to react to us. If they start getting hundreds and thousands of weird responses to their credit card applications, well, they're going to have to have meetings. They're going to have to develop new procedures. And every hour banks spend reacting to us is an hour banks don't spend lobbying Congress on how to screw us. It's an hour banks don't spend foreclosing on our houses. So I think that that's progress. Now, this uh, postage paid protest sort of thing, this is no substitute for getting out into the street and making your voices heard. The Occupy Wall Street movement started in the street, and for the time being, that's where the life of this protest is. But after you've been out there lending your voice to the crowd, or if you happen to live in a city that's away from the big cities that are having major Occupy movements, go to your mailbox, spend five seconds sorting through your junk mail, and send some stuff back to these guys. If you can't Occupy Wall Street, you can at least keep Wall Street occupied. Thanks for watching.